Is America ready to adopt the EV on a large scale? My answer is no. And it comes down to numbers for me. I'm going to get to all that right now. In August of 2022, Car and Driver magazine stated that 2% of the vehicles on American roads were electric. That's not a big number. Based on EV technology that we have today, and what else really could be used to forecast growth, I do not think that number will grow substantially in the next 7 to 10 years. It will certainly grow, but no more than maybe 30% of total vehicle production. And it comes down to numbers for me. And here are those numbers. According to the Pew Research Center, as of August 2021, 36% of Americans currently live under rental agreements. That number is growing a little bit every year. For a large majority of renters, charging a car where they park and reside just as impossible. The U.S. Census states that one in five Americans live in areas defined as rural. That's about 60 million people. This from their website, in general, rural areas are sparsely populated, have low housing density, and are far from urban centers. Urban centers make up 3% of the entire land area of the country, but are home to more than 80% of the population. Conversely, 97% of the country's land mass is rural, but only 19.3% of the population lives there. Now, surely some of those that live in rural areas rent, but they are less likely to rent, and this part of our population historically has had to wait to see technological improvements. We are in 20 2023, and yet still many of those living in rural areas of America do not have high-speed internet. That is a much easier hurdle to leap than high-speed EV charging. We then have those that stretch commute. These folks have trips that are at least 50 miles one way in order to get to their workplace. According to the United States Department of Transportation, that makes up 13% of the population. And while some electric cars have that type of range, a full 50% of those stretch commuters drive more than 124 miles one way. And that type of range is only found in the higher priced electric cars. So we've identified a large part of the population where an EV just isn't a great option. If we added those groups together and deducted overlap, conservatively, we'd be looking at between 40 and 45% of the population where this just isn't going to work with today's technology. We hear that charging stations are going to become more common and that charging your EV will be just as simple as filling your car with gasoline. But that's not where we are today. Currently, charging an EV can take anywhere from 30 minutes to 40 hours, depending on the level of the charger. And let's face it, if you already have a 50 to 100 mile commute, tacking on an extra half an hour, even if you find one of those chargers, isn't all that great an option. Now, some folks don't subscribe to the thought that time is money, but you know a lot of us do. And speaking of money, let's get into the cost of EVs. This may be the largest obstacle for mass adoption. The cost of these things. The average price for an EV sits at $66,000. That's according to Kelly Blue Book. The average price for an internal combustion engine vehicle runs around $44,000. As manufacturing of electric vehicles ramps up, you would expect the cost to go down. But we have not seen that with the EV. The costs have increased due to the rarity of the metals required to make the batteries. The F-150 Lightning now costs $15,000 more than it did at launch just over a year ago. We have GMC's Hummer, and just like last time it was offered to the public, it's a complete mess. It's priced at over $80,000 if you can find one at that price. Also, the thing weighs 4.5 tons. That's over 9,000 pounds. It's roughly the weight of a semi-truck. That's not efficiency. It takes a lot of energy, electric or otherwise, to move a vehicle that weighs that much. Tesla recently has made news by decreasing the cost of their vehicles. But let's face it, those cars were anywhere from eighty dollars to $120,000. So a decrease still doesn't get them anywhere near the average cost of an internal combustion engine vehicle. This isn't a trend that's likely to change anytime soon as the amount of precious metals is like oil. It's finite. It's a fixed amount. It's difficult to acquire. And while yes, you can recycle almost 100% of these metals, it isn't happening. According to Princeton University, only 5% of lithium batteries are currently being recycled in America. That includes those found in electric vehicles because it's not cost effective. So if EVs are not going to be the dominant car of the immediate future, what is? I would say a technology that we currently have that is cost efficient and time effective, and that would be the hybrid. Yes, they still utilize battery technology, but the batteries are much smaller, and they do not rely on it exclusively. We've already seen an 8% adoption of this type of vehicle in the U.S. market. That's four times that of the EV. 
Today's Prius it gets 57 miles per gallon and has a low total cost of ownership. Toyota is already the number one selling brand in the U.S. and they offer more hybrid versions of their vehicles than any other manufacturer. The Corolla Hybrid gets 50 miles per gallon in the city and 43 on the highway. The Camry 51 City 53 Highway. Ford's own Maverick gets 42 City and 33 Highway and Ford is able to sell everyone it produces. The assembly plant in Mexico just added a third shift in order to try to keep up with demand. Unfortunately, Ford and all its other American competitors are almost all in on the fully electric vehicle. I believe that's the wrong direction, and I believe the reason for that error is the same reason Ford no longer produces small, efficient cars. It's called profit. Big vehicles lead to big dollars, but big vehicles also are just not very efficient. If American car companies want to thrive, they're going to need to expand their hybrid line vehicles alongside their EV offerings. Now, I know this is going to be a controversial video, kind of cutting right down the middle there. And yes, there may be a technology that's yet to be unveiled that will make an EV as easy to charge as it is to fill today's cars with gasoline. The point is, we're just not there yet. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That's going to help other people see it. Also, please consider subscribing. That's also appreciated. If you're considering purchasing a Ford Maverick, check out this video over here. That's going to cover the 2023 Maverick, show you all the features and all the models. Until next time, thanks for watching. We'll see you.